Welcome to season four of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor, Amy Newsel, and this season, we'll dive into something we are all familiar with, fatigue. What is it? Why does it happen? Most importantly, how can we fix it outside of this? Enjoy the video version of this podcast on YouTube. The channel is at to help with that. This week, let's talk about fatigue and oxygen. So obviously, as humans, we need oxygen. That fact is not lost on us. But often, the factors that get in the way of getting good oxygen are overlooked. A few well-known causes of fatigue, like anemia and iron deficiency, are actually oxygen problems, even though we don't really think of them that way, typically. But there are other issues as well. So the reason iron deficiency makes people tired is because in order for your blood to carry oxygen to your brain and to other cells, it needs to have a good level of iron that the oxygen can bond to. So it isn't the lack of iron itself that causes symptoms. It's its inability to carry enough oxygen. Carbon monoxide is a problem along a similar vein because it bonds to the iron in your blood, limiting the amount of oxygen that can then be carried by that iron because all the bonding spots are taken up. So technically, these are both oxygenation problems. We have discussed iron deficiency and carbon monoxide both in Season 4, Episode 2, and iron in more depth in season three, episode 25. So there's no real need to get into that again, but it is important to know that all of these oxygen issues have a common core. Sleep apnea is the classic oxygen-related sleep problem. So apnea happens when something interferes with your breathing during the night and causes you to wake up briefly, even if you're not aware that you're waking up, so that you can catch your breath. The most common early symptom of sleep apnea is snoring and waking up feeling unrested or unrefreshed. There's two types of apnea called central and peripheral. Central is a little harder to work with because in this problem, the brain fails to send breathing signals to your body. And so there's not as many lifestyle factors that can actually mitigate that problem. Peripheral happens because swollen or saggy tissues in the throat or sinuses block the airways momentarily or excess body weight puts too much burden on the muscles you use to breathe. Peripheral apnea then can be actually managed with dental devices that make sure that your airways stay open, weight loss, and occasionally surgery to remove, say, swollen adenoids. Failing those, both types of apnea are treated with a CPAP machine, which is it enriches the air you breathe overnight with oxygen and does actually work to restore sleep quality. It's therapeutically effective as long as you can tolerate a mask over your mouth and nose or nasal cannula during the night. As with sleep apnea, if your airways are inflamed, swollen, or mucousy, that also leads to a low oxygen internal environment. Chronic sinus infections, allergies, asthma, they're all huge culprits in the oxygen-deficient fatigue world. And working to treat those will boost your sleep quality, but also your daytime energy outside of the sleep you get because your brain needs fresh oxygen all the time. The big thing that I want to talk about is actually mouth breathing and nighttime oxygenation. So this is where we really hit the meat of today's talk, because as we age, many of us mouth breathe at night, and usually we don't even know that we do this thing. This causes a hit to our nighttime oxygenation and our daytime energy levels, and that is really significant, and it's something very fixable. Mouth breathing can be caused by all sorts of things, sinus issues, allergies, colds, deviated septum, enlarged adenoids, unusual sleep positions, asthma, even habit or a bad mattress, right? Many people who do breathe predominantly through their mouth at night are completely unaware of it. Some signs that this might be a thing that you do include dry mouth or chapped lips when you wake up, bad breath, snoring, or drool on your pillow. Lovely. 
Your partner might notice that you mouth breathe, but they might not. It's often unobtrusive and difficult to notice because you may switch back and forth during the night, just depending on sleep position and other factors. So why, you might ask, is it such a big deal? Because mouth breathing is still breathing, right? Oxygen still comes in. Okay, but even though there's still airflow, we are actually designed to breathe through our noses to help optimize air for maximum oxygen exchange in the lung tissue. So when you breathe through your nose, there's three things that happen to the air that don't happen to air that comes in through your mouth. Those are, number one, your nasal passages have tiny hairs called cilia that trap and filter out allergens, pollutions, and other particles, which actually helps to reduce irritation in your lower airways and lungs and reduces inflammation. So what happens there is that when air is coming through your nose, your lungs and airways become less inflamed, less mucousy, and there's better oxygen transfer than when it's coming through your mouth and still has whatever particulates in it. Number two, your nose has bony structures called turbinates that moisten the air you breathe, making it friendlier to your lung tissue. Mouth breathing loses a lot of the moisture and that helps your lungs to function normally. Number three, your throat and lungs are designed for warm air. Warm meaning body temperature warm. Your nose and sinuses help to allow air to warm up before it actually passes into the lungs, where it doesn't have as much of an opportunity to do so when it comes in through your mouth. These sound like small things, but we have very narrow physiological margins for optimal performance, right? And the optimal performance of our lungs depends on these three things. So what do you do about this, right? There's a few options to explore. The simplest, but and by far my favorite, because it's ludicrous, is mouth taping. It may sound odd, but taping your mouth shut at night forces you to breathe through your nose. Obviously, this only works out if your nose is clear enough to breathe through. Otherwise, it's just a really bizarre way to suffocate yourself. There are dozens of mouth tape strips available and for sale, but any sensitive skin, gentle removal medical tape will work. Just a small piece in the center of your mouth from top to bottom is enough, like this. Ta -da! Medical tape isn't strong enough to actually hold your mouth closed if you need to open it to breathe, and there isn't any danger. Although the first few times I used mouth tape, I definitely felt a bit like a lunatic. Opportunity for hilarity aside, it can improve your sleep quality and help you to wake up feeling actually rested. Another alternative is a chin strap, chin bib, or chin hammock type device that hooks over your ears and holds your mouth closed overnight. It is as silly looking as it sounds, but just like the tape. It helps you get a good night's sleep and wake up feeling rested. If there's a serious sinus blockage, then sometimes surgery is actually the answer because it can help to clear a deviated septum, remove swollen, enlarged, or infected adenoids, sinus polyps, and otherwise clear physical obstructions out of the way of your airflow. So yes, we all know we need oxygen to function. But when you go to your doctor's office and tell them you're tired, they might not be thinking about mouth breathing specifically. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen today. And if you try mouth taping, let me know how it goes in the comments. I will be delighted to hear. 